Praise the Lord. I'm going to share a word with you from the Holy Spirit tonight. So I want to ask you if you wouldn't mind just returning to your seats for a bit. Chapter 4 tonight, verses 1 to 6, and uh, the words will be on your screens. The prophet says, Now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who is wakened out of sleep. And he said to me, What do you see? So I said, I'm looking, and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it, and on the stand seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, one at the right of the bowl and the other at its left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, come on, say it with me, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. We need to take a few minutes tonight to talk about the power of God and how God says what is the way that we are to accomplish the things that he's commanded us to do. So let's look quickly at some of these verses from Zechariah before we go back to prayer tonight. The first verse says, Now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who is wakened out of sleep. You know, you might have had some experiences with the Lord in the past. Maybe even some great experiences. Maybe you've even spoken with an angel. I don't know. Perhaps like Zechariah, you've had prophetic experiences in the past. You've had some times when you've been on the mountaintop with God. How many of you have had some great times with the Lord in your life? Maybe an angel has even shown you things in the past. But now, perhaps, if you had to look at yourself honestly, like the prophet in this passage, maybe you've gone to sleep just a little bit. You're asleep to the power of God, and you've forgotten that God has the ability to work in your life and work through you. Don't we need to be reminded of his ability in us? Do we still have the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives that we used to have? This is not a rebuke, church. This is a challenge to us to examine where we're at. Maybe once again, you need an angel like Zechariah or at least a faithful friend to poke you in the ribs. Maybe you need the Holy Spirit to come up alongside you once again and remind you that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or even think. God is wanting, I believe, to awaken some of us tonight to tell us that he's got power available for us and that we need to operate on his power and stop operating on our own power. In the second verse, the angel questions him and says, what do you see? And I said, I'm looking and I see this lampstand with solid gold and a bowl on top of it and all these lamps and pipes and there's two olive trees, one on each side. It'd be good for you someday to study this vision in detail, not while I'm talking, but later when you get home. It's a fascinating vision. Here was a lampstand burning with oil and two olive trees. The idea is that the olive trees give out a continuous stream of oil to the people to provide them light. Oil, olive oil, is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. And so the olive tree is a picture. It's a symbol of an unfailing supply. Have you ever run out of gas on 287 at rush hour? Wouldn't it be good to have an unfailing supply? Well, there's only one unfailing supply that I know of, and that's the supply of the Holy Spirit from heaven to us if we're open to receive it. And the olive tree is a picture of that. It's an unfailing supply. You know, there are a few trees, a few olive trees in the Mediterranean region, Greece and Israel and Italy and Syria and those countries. There are a few of those trees which are over 2,000 years old. And there's actually an olive tree in Greece which is over 3,000 years old. Can you imagine that? That's a picture that God wants to give you, an unfailing supply. God will often come to us like the angel came to the prophet and ask us to assess our situation. 
take your own spiritual temperature. See, God knows that sometimes we've run out of power. Why? Because we are no longer looking at the real sources of power that he has provided for us. We're no longer looking at sources of power that don't go dry. We're no longer looking at the Word of God. We're no longer looking to the Spirit of God. Is it all right if I preach to you a little bit tonight? But here's the thing, and here's the shame for a Pentecostal people, for a people who are called to be a people of power. Everything in our society is geared towards getting you to see yourself as the all-sufficient source of power instead of the Holy Spirit. So we teach ourselves and we teach our kids little sayings which have nothing to do with scripture or the power of God, but instead they have to do with positive thinking. If you can imagine it, you can achieve it. If you can dream it, you can become it. Or if you believe in yourself, anything is possible. And I see Christians quoting these kinds of things all day long on Facebook, usually in capital letters, as if they were the wisdom of God, and they're not. On the other hand, the Apostle Paul has to be in anybody's list of the top 10 most influential people in history. And what did Paul say? Paul said, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, no good thing dwells. I guess was when Paul was in rabbinical school, they weren't very concerned about the self-esteem of the kids. Are you tracking with me? So how did Paul become one of the most influential people in history? How did Paul accomplish so much when he had such poor self-esteem, the poor guy? You can find the answer in Colossians 1.29. Paul says, I labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Paul knew the secret of working with the power of Christ. In verse 4, Zechariah says, I answered and I spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? And the angel answered and said, Don't you know what these are? And he said, This is the word of the Lord. It's not by might or by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Now, there's a whole story here, and there's a whole context that we don't have time to get into tonight. But I want to emphasize to you that God says that the things that matter to him are not accomplished by might or by power, but by his Holy Spirit. There's two important words here on which the unbelieving world depends, but which ultimately lead to frustration and failure in our own lives, and that's that might and power. Might is a Hebrew word that's hard to say. It's chayil. Starts with a ch. And this word is most commonly used in the Bible to refer to an army or to refer to military forces. It's used to describe a man of valor or a virtuous woman. Sometimes it's translated as wealth or riches. It also refers to men of ability. These are all different ways that it's translated in the Bible. And God said, it's not through those things that I accomplish my will. It means strength, but we could say that it is strength that is organized according to man's wisdom because it also means ability. It means efficiency. In other words, it's the ability of man's soul to take his talents and develop himself and make something out of himself. It's man's ability to engage, engage in organized activities. And God says, it's not by that. God also says it's not by power. Power is the word koach. And that word also means power or strength, but when it's used of human beings, how many, how many buff people do we have here tonight? Anybody buff? Anybody, was anybody lifting big stacks of weights today? Anybody? When used of human beings, this word koach means efforts and exertions. For example, when Jacob was getting ready to leave the house of his father-in-law, Laban, he spoke to his wives, Rachel and Leah, and he said, You know that I have served your father with all my power. In other words, Jacob was saying, I put my back into it. I 
shed some sweat over this thing. And this speaks about the power of the flesh of man. It is raw power. It is muscle power. And God says, it's not by that that I accomplish my purpose either. So when we take these two things together, they represent everything that man is capable of performing. His physical strength, his wisdom, his technology, his cleverness. All of this is man's ability to develop himself. You know, in Hebrew thinking, an animal is a creature, and the word really literally has this idea in it. An animal is a creature that cannot improve himself. Your cat does not have to go to cat school. He has catness inside of himself. Your dog has dog ability from the time he's born. He doesn't need to go to dog school. But see, man, in the Hebrew mentality, what is a man? A man is someone, a woman is someone who can develop himself and become something that he did not used to be. And God said, as powerful as those things are, as powerful as those capacities are that he has built into every human being, the great things of God, the significant things, the important things of life are not accomplished by all the power of the soul of man or the flesh of man. Instead, God says, it is not by these things, but it is by my spirit. And so we need to return. We need to return to what? We need to return to that understanding. Jesus said, who knows the word of God? Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. How many of you believe that? Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. But despite this, and if you agree with me that what I'm about to say is true, I want everyone in the room to hang your head in shame. Despite the fact that we believe that, we ask God to do very little. Did you drop your heads? We spend very little time asking God for his power to be manifested in our lives and manifested in the church. Thank you, sir. We need to realize once again that the answer to so many of our problems and the power to accomplish the things that we know that we need to do for God is only to be found in the presence of God and in the supernatural working of the Holy Spirit. How many of you, I want to I show of hands, how many of you in this room feel that, and no condemnation if you're a new believer and you haven't got some of these things sorted out in your heart yet, that's fine, I understand that, but how many of you know of things in your life that God has specifically called you to do and you feel like you need to do for God? How many of you know of things that you know God, wow, that's awesome. That tells me that you've been seeking God's heart for your life about what God would have you to be doing to do his business and his work. God says, nothing of what you have is capable in and of itself to accomplish those things. This is what we need, church. Neither the soul of man nor the flesh of man has any substitute for the power of God. Do you know that? Man may have an imitation of the power of God, but he does not have a substitute for the power of God. That's tweetable too, Pastor. We need the reality of the Holy Spirit more than ever. I don't know if you've looked around lately in the world around you, but not everybody loves Jesus yet. We need the reality of the Spirit more than ever. We need the reality of the Holy Spirit in our worship. We need the reality of the Holy Spirit in the fruit of the Spirit. You say to me, well, Pastor Nick, this is who I am. This is my personality. I can't change. Well, I know you can't, but Jesus can change you, and he wants to. We need the reality of the Holy Spirit in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Some of you have waited a very long time to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and this could be your night. We need the reality of the Holy Spirit in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We need every gift that God has. Pastor Glenn likes to tell us to be spiritually greedy, and that's good advice. Jesus said that he that believes in me out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living waters. 
And if you cannot honestly say tonight that that's your experience, then you need more of God. Well, there's no sense in beating around the bush. You say, well, that's not my personality or that's not how I was raised. That's not the type of church environment that I'm comfortable with and so on. Well, I'm not asking you about that. We're asking you tonight if you can honestly say that you've got rivers of living water flowing out of you. The question's not what you know or what you were raised in. The question is whether, like Zechariah, whether the angel is able to wake you out of sleep tonight and be able to do this number and point your head to be able to see that unfailing source of supply one more time. The question is whether there's a fire burning on the altar of your heart or whether you've allowed it to fizzle out. How many of you would say tonight, I want the fire in my heart to be red hot? How many of you would say, I want the manifest presence of God in my life? How many of you believe it's not by might and it's not by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord? We're going to move into a time of prayer over these things, and I want to ask you to stand, and I'm going to ask you to come back to this altar if you want to be set on fire personally and see God's Holy Spirit fire in this church. And I want the weary ones and the most dried out and the most fizzled out ones to come first and fastest. Come on, come to this altar if you want the fire of the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth, let's sing that set of fire. Can you sing the No Place I'd Rather Be part? Can we start with that? There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. Lord, we need your fire tonight, Lord God. We need your fire tonight. We want to see God set a fire in our hearts. We want to see God set a fire in our families. We want to see his manifest presence in his church. But I think the way to do that, the way to begin church tonight is to give up. We need to give up thinking that what we can do with our soul, what you can do with your education, what you can do with your savvy, with your computer savvy, with your language skills, with your physical strength is adequate to accomplish what only the Spirit of God can accomplish in our midst. There's only one source of propulsion that's going to get you to where it is that God has called you to get to. And it's not manpower or horsepower. It's only Holy Ghost power. If Jesus needed the anointing of the Holy Ghost to perform his mission, what do you think about us? So let's repent tonight before we pray anything else. Let's repent of our own might and strength. If you have gifts, if you have talents, if you have abilities, those are from God. But let's repent of thinking that that is the might and the strength that will push it all forward. Let's repent of thinking that we can do it without God. Come on, pray this with me. Say, Lord, I repent of doing it my way, of not looking to you, of not looking to your strength, of thinking that I have all the answers, of thinking that positive thinking can do it, of thinking that my own wisdom can do it, of thinking that my talents are enough. I repent of not welcoming your spirit, of not inviting your spirit into my day, into my situations, into my relationships, into my ministry, into my house. God, I repent of not inviting your spirit to be the power behind my life. And so I turn away from relying on my own ability. And I receive your ability. Go ahead and praise him.
All right, now that we've done that, we can take a minute and begin to invite his manifest presence. Come on, first we're going to pray for our own hearts before we pray about a wider circle. Come on, let's pray for our own hearts. Say, Lord Jesus, fill me with your spirit. Fill me to overflowing. It still sounds too polite in here. Overwhelm me with the presence of your spirit. Out of my innermost being. Let there come forth rivers of living water. Saturate me with your spirit. Set me on fire with your spirit. Let my heart burn with holy fire from your altar in heaven. Let my heart be your altar. Move through me. Work through me. Flow through me. Use me in the gifts of the Spirit. Make me a vessel for your presence and for your glory. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're, we're going to pray for a couple more things, but if you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, I want you to be honest. I don't want you to be embarrassed. Lift up both hands to heaven. Lift up both hands to heaven. Somebody who's nearby, prayer teams, or just anybody who's got faith, lay hands on anybody right now that you see who's got their hands up. Lift your hands up high. Don't be embarrassed. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Tonight can be your night. You're just going to begin to praise and worship God and trust Him that as you do, He's going to gloriously fill you, and you're going to begin to praise Him in a new heavenly language that's going to flow out of you. But you have to open your mouth. Jesus said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children when they ask you, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So just begin to praise Him. Just begin to worship him. Lord Jesus, you're the baptizer in the spirit. Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you blow through this room right now and gloriously fill the people of Jesus? Oh, it's the Holy Spirit, there's people that are receiving touches from the Lord. Let's continue to intercede together. Come on, if you're not praying for somebody, I want you to lift your hands to heaven. We've prayed to repent of relying on our own power. We've prayed for our hearts. How many of you want to see God's glory in your homes? Let's lift our hands and pray for our homes. Come on, pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, send your fire upon my home. Holy Spirit, I invite you to be the guest of honor in my dwelling place. Let your manifest presence be recognized by everyone who enters my home. Let my home be an abode of peace. Let your presence rest powerfully upon my children and every person who dwells in my home. I commit to you today that my home will be a place where you receive honor from this day forward. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, come Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray for Christ Church together. I've got one more prayer I want to lead you in. And we're going to pray for this assembly of believers, that it's going to be a place of God's manifest presence. Come on, uh, raise your arms if you would one more time. Come on, see the Holy Spirit will strengthen your arms. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Lord Jesus, we ask you to pour out your spirit in greater measure than ever before. Fill harvest time with your glory. Let your presence be manifest to everyone who enters this house. Make this a place 
where salvation is common. Where healing is common. Where deliverance is common. Where angelic ministry is common. Where families are restored. Where children walk in righteousness. Where teenagers walk in righteousness. Because your spirit is here in power. Anoint every pastor here. Anoint every ministry leader. Every Sunday school teacher. Every ministry worker. Every worship team member. Every volunteer. Come on, cry out with me. Come, Holy Spirit. Come on, cry out to him. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come on, cry out for more. Cry out for more. communication of God's will. And if you feel like you've been stuck uh, in not being able to figure out God's will for a situation, uh, I want you to just look up to the Lord and just believe in faith that he's going to help you see things clearly. This brother here uh, in the red shirt, yeah, I'm, I don't I don't know you, brother, but I believe the Lord's saying to you that you need a healing and you need a job or a better job, and God's going to touch in both those areas. Sorry. But let's just, let's just take a minute. Come on, let's just take a minute. Lord, communicate your will to your people, Lord God. Your word gives us so many great promises of guidance tonight, Lord. And before we transition into another segment, Lord, we just, we need you to speak to us in our hearts, Lord God. Lord, pastors and teachers and worship leaders cannot do for us what what must be done in the transactions of the heart between ourselves and heaven. So Lord, would you just communicate your will to each one of our minds and our hearts, Lord, our futures, our careers, Lord, decisions about uh, where we're to live and how we're to minister and what to do, friendships, marriage, engagement, all of these things. Lord, you give uh, encouragement to your people. You say that you will hear a voice behind you that says, this is the way, walking in it. So tonight, Father, I pray that you would bring all your people up into a higher level of hearing your voice and knowing and having assurance in their hearts of what it is that you want them to do over the next six and 12 and 18 months. And we thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for all the good things you're doing tonight and Lord, that you're gonna do from now until 6 a.m. in this house, God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Jesus! 